Hello and welcome to the Sentry Counterfeit IC Detector video tutorial. In this video I will show you how to use the Sentry software and how to make the best of your equipment. As you start the software you will notice a login access with username and passwords. This is used to restrict access to certain areas of the software so that data is not being deleted by accident for instance. As I log in with my password the welcome screen appears. On the welcome screen there is a button for a quick start guide for first time users to set up the unit quickly and to make the first measurements. On the left hand side there are different sections. The learn sections is used to set up a new device and to acquire the reference data. In the test sections users can select an existing device and test a whole batch of components. In the library components can be deleted or exported and imported between different machines. The hardware ensures that the unit is connected properly and also offers a calibration option. And in the administration users can be added, deleted and access levels can be granted. The Learn section is used to set up a new device and to acquire the reference data. It can also be used to relearn an existing device from the library. In this example, I will learn a new device and set the component reference, which is usually the part number of the device. I can also set up a manufacturer for reference purposes. And then select the package of the component. Now this is the number of pins of the component and the configuration of those pins. This could be dual in line, surface mount, BGA, QFP, etc. For this example, I'm using a simple 8 pin dual in line package. There is no adapter required as I'm placing the component directly into the ZIF socket of the Sentry unit. The reference and scan profiles can be used by more advanced users but in most cases it is recommended to use the automatic settings. Click OK. The component is then added to the library and ready for test. As the component is placed onto the screen I can click the learn button and I'm reminded to place the component into the uppermost part of the ZIF socket. Click OK. And in this configuration, the software will automatically work out the best algorithm to acquire the pin prints of the component. This takes a little bit longer than the actual testing process. Once acquisition is complete, I can actually go and look at the pin prints in the results section and view the data that's been acquired. Note that you can also add documentation to the device, such as a picture, a PDF document, a Word, an Excel, or any other information that is relevant to the device. Once this is acquired, I can save the information. Once this is saved, the information from the user and date and time are saved against this particular device. And now the learning process is finished. In the test section, the component can be selected from the library. I can also use the filter option to find the component that we set up before and click OK. The component reappears along with the save pin prints we have previously acquired and any documentation that have, may have been added to the device. Once the component is inserted in the right position, the test can begin and the software will automatically compare the acquired pin prints with the saved pin prints and return a pass or fail result. Other options are available like the scan mode where the component can be tested in loop continuously. Um, also some results statistics about the passes and fails of the component. In the results section the pin prints can be viewed in details along with a comparison mask which determines the pass or fail result. As often required, a report can be generated after the test. This report is configurable and users can make changes to them. But it generally includes the pin summary and also the pin prints of the component. 
if photos are included they can also be integrated into the report by regenerating in the library users can access all the components available and make changes to them more importantly they can import and export these components along with the pinprints to exchange data between Sentry users a package manager and adapter manager is also available for more advanced users all the instructions are available in the manual the hardware section is used to ensure that the Sentry hardware is working properly but also to calibrate the unit as and when required using the calibration kit. In the administration section, users can be added or deleted and granted certain access to the software sections. There is also an option to modify the comparison tolerances set as standard by the Sentry software. There are other options within the Sentry software. For instance, the four ZIF sockets available on the Sentry hardware can be used to test multiple devices at the same time. As described earlier, documents can be added to a component for reference. These can be PDF documents, diagrams, photos, office documents, or even a link to an internet page. There is a whole range of adapters that can be used with Sentry, from single dedicated surface mount adapters to universal solutions for a range of pin counts and gauges. The PLCC Universal Solution also offers different pin counts. Custom solutions can also be provided by ABI Electronics for BGA and QFP packages. Sentry is the proud owner of a Global Technology Award which recognizes the best in innovation technology.